السلام عليكم ورحمة الله عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم بمصابنا بأمير المؤمنين عليه السلام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه الأخيار المنتجبين وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون ما يأتيهم من ذكر من ربهم محدث إلا استمعوه وهم يلعبون لاهية قلوبهم صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات In sha Allah, what um, I will try to cover tonight and sha Allah, the coming couple of nights is what I'd like to consider as a few maybe tips or reminders for us to help us to experience, let me say, transformation of Laylatul Qadr. A Laylatul Qadr where we feel that it actually changed something in us. It is one thing that we come to this gathering, we spend a few hours, we recite the du'as that are recommended, we recite the dhikr, the salat that are recommended, which is, inshallah, very good, and leave just as we've entered. But it's another thing that we actually look backwards after we finish and we say, okay, alhamdulillah, I have learned something. I've changed something. I've decided to change something in me. I decided to maybe stop doing that sin or stop doing that makruh. I decided to actually spend more time and effort on, you know, gain, gaining more proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I actually become, became closer to Allah. I understood more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the du'as we are reading. The verse that I have just recited, it translates to English as the following. The time of people, people's judgment has approached. Allah is telling us. Yet, they are heedlessly turning away. Whatever new reminder comes to them from their Lord, they only listen to it jokingly, with their hearts totally distracted. We have this in us, maybe as humans, that we tend to forget, we tend to get distracted from the things that matter. If I were to ask any one of you today, what are two facts that you know for certain about yourself? Yeah. Most probably, the first one would be that you exist, that you are here, that you were born, that you were brought to this life at some point in time, right? So that you have a starting point in this life. What would the next fact be? Can anyone give a guess? Hassan, that we are departing from this world. No one of us is remaining in this world. And that's a fact that we all know, right? Interesting that people's attitude towards the remembrance of death might be different. You know where I, where I, I come from, from Lebanon? Sometimes if you remember death or you say, for example, you know, when I die or if I die, someone says, oh, بعيد الشر, you know, may Allah forbid that evil. But the thing is, Allah will not forbid death. Yeah, it will happen, it will occur. Some people have that attitude of being repelled away from the remembrance of death. Some people are actually, no, they are prepared for it. Some people, Sheikh Ahmed, bless him, a few nights ago, he mentioned something about Imam al-Hasan. He said, كُلَّمَا ذُكِرَ عِنْدَهُ الْمَوْتْ بَكَى Whenever death was remembered in front of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam or mentioned, Imam al-Hasan would cry. Some people take it seriously. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam in Nahj al-Balagha, he says, Wallahi, لَبْنُ أَبِي طَالِبْ آنَسُ بِالْمَوْتِ مِنَ الطِّفْلِ بِثَبِي أُمْنِهِ He's saying, I am more acquainted with death 
than the baby with the breast of his mother. Death is something that is already there in my background. In fact, Ahlul Bayt recommended, and the Prophet wasalam, recommended to us to remember death. It is a good thing. Right? It is something that, if we think it's a bad thing, we should actually change that perception. Imam Amir al muminin says, أُوصِيكُمْ عِبَادَ اللَّهِ بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَكَثْرَةِ ذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ all the servants of Allah, I give you a will. I recommend that you observe taqwa. Inshallah, we'll talk about taqwa in the coming night. And that you remember death abundantly. Kathrat dhikr al Remember death a lot. That's a very interesting will that Amir al is giving us, isn't it? So remembering death seems to be a very fundamental element of self-building. Let me turn to the youngsters. Inshallah, I hope that not only me who talks tonight, inshallah, you also help me. Can anyone tell me or try to guess why is it good to remember death? What do you think? Why is it good to remember death? Why is it good that, let's say at school, you remember that you have exams at the end of the semester why is it good why do you think huh that's truth. It is truth. it's the truth yeah but why is it good to remember it a lot and not forget it because when you remember something you prepare for it isn't it yeah when you remember something you prepare for it Amir al-Mu'mineen is telling us to remember death abundantly so that we actually take it seriously and we prepare for it. Not to become, you know, negative or look negatively into this world. In fact, no, it should do the complete opposite. It should allow you to actually focus on the things that are more important in your life and let go of the things that are unimportant. It reminds you to actually be heedful of Allah's commands and obey them and avoid Allah's prohibitions. Right? Because that brings you happiness, actually. That brings you, you success to your life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, أَكْثِرُوا مِن ذِكْرِ هَادِمِ اللَّذَّاتِ Remember a lot the thing that destroys desires. He was asked, and what is that, O Prophet of Allah? He said, المَوْت Death is the thing that would destroy desires. And inshallah, we'll talk later about why is it good actually to remember death and to restrain desires and to actually combat desires. One might think that it is fine, you know, it brings me joy. Yes, but it doesn't bring you happiness. The Prophet is saying, the most wise of you, the wisest of you, here, yeah, is the person who remembers death the most. This would make you the wisest. In another narration, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَمَنْ أَثْقَلَهُ الْمَوْتِ وَجَدَ قَبْرَهُ رَلْضَةً مِنْ رِيَضِ الْجَنَّةِ So when you remember death a lot, and you prepare for it, therefore, right? what will the outcome be? What happens when you remember the final exam always, and you come back from school, and you do your homework, and you do what you have to do, and you don't really procrastinate till the end of the semester, what happens in the end? Inshallah, you will succeed. You will have good marks, isn't it? You'll move to the next step. This is what the Prophet is saying. Actually, your grave, meaning your next life, will be a garden of the gardens of heaven. If you remember death a lot. Yeah? This is what the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us. And this is where there is a saying that says, Mutu qabla an tamutu, die before you die. Yeah? Because what happens when we die? When we die, the curtains, the veils that are covering our sight from seeing the realities of things, they get open. Allah describes the day of judgment that you see things as they really are, not as you thought they are in this world. Yeah? So we have a sharp sight on the day of judgment. Die before you die means that here, before the time of your death actually arrives, work so that you see things as they really are. Work so that you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will reveal the things to you as they really are. 
works so that you see that actually disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, committing a certain sin, looking at the haram, hearing the haram, it's actually painful. It is actually harmful. But sometimes we don't see it actually, and this is why we do it. You know, if I had a glass of water next to me and I know that this is poisonous, would you drink? Would I drink from it? I wouldn't, right? But if I don't know that it's poisonous, I might drink from it. Our problem sometimes is that we don't see the poison in the sin. We don't see the poison in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is saying, actually, you know, I ask you to remember me because it actually brings you happiness. Allah is saying, whoever turns away from my reminder, they shall have a difficult life, a depressed life. Remembering Allah brings you happiness, brings your heart light. A verse of the Quran that we all recited today, inshallah. Audhubillah min shaitan rajim hatta ida jaa ahadahum al mawtu qala rabbi rji'oon. Allah is describing here the situation of some people when death, when the time of death comes to them, they say what? Oh my God, return me back. Please return me back. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتُ Maybe I'll do good in what I've left behind. You know, sometimes when you don't have any opportunity, yeah, you feel like lost towards the end and this is how we should feel actually towards the end of the month of ramadan that you know there's been a lot of treasures that we haven't taken from as much as we have we should have we feel regret so the person these people types of people they feel regret at the time of death that they want to go back maybe i can do good maybe i can do more good but the answer from allah says it says never no it, it never happened it will never happen when the time comes that's it, there's no other opportunity. Now, alhamdulillah, we have a great opportunity. You know, many of you, mashallah, you know, we're young, inshallah, young in the hearts as well. Yeah, we have time, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you, give you all a prolonged life, inshallah. Imam Zain al Abidin has a very beautiful dua in Dua Makar al Akhlaq. He says, ma kana umri bidlatan fi ta'atik. He's saying, Oh God, make me live longer, as so long as my life is actually spent in your obedience. Make it longer. I want to live longer if I'm obeying you. But if my life is a playground for shaitan, O oh God, take me. Before your anger, before your wrath, before your displeasure with me, comes to me. A very beautiful dua from the Imam So inshallah, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prolong your life in his obedience. Now, why am I mentioning this? In order for us to actually seize the opportunity that we have tonight. Tonight and every night, inshallah, and every single minute of our time. The remembrance of death, as I said, it helps us remember what really matters. And that is the Day of Judgment. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who's going to be the king, the owner, the ruler on the Day of Judgment? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you all say it in Surah Al-Fatiha every day. Yeah? What is it? Iyaka na'budu, no, sorry. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Ahsan. Malik yawm al-Din. Allah is the master of the day of judgment. There's no ruler, there's no governor except Allah on the day of judgment. So remembering death means that we are remembering that day that we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, in this world, before we move on, we need to sort ourselves out. We need to make sure that when we stand on the Day of Judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are safe. Yeah? Now, of course, we ask Allah that He may treat us there with His mercy, not with His justice. You know? Because if He treats us with His justice, we are doomed, to be honest. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves so much more than what we do. So much more than what we do. And we're always muqassir, there's always shortcomings compared to what Allah deserves. But Allah, alhamdulillah, he promised us mercy. Yes? As long as we deserve his special type of mercy. Allah's mercy dictated that we remember him in this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what? He commanded us to do certain things. So that we remember him every day. Right? Like what? What do we do to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day? Al Ajwajib. Hasan, Salat, yeah? Salat. Five times a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us 
to pray to him. Morning, noon, afternoon, sunset, Aisha, right? All around the clock, Allah is saying, look, take a break from this world that you are living. It's fine that you work. It's good that you work. You have to work. It's fine that you're taking a break and you, you, know, you have some time with your friends. That's beautiful. Keep it. That's very good. But take a couple of minutes every few hours to remember me. Because what matters in this world is me. That's what Allah is saying. Because when you understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you really understand the meaning of your life. You really understand the meaning of your life. And that's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not actually telling us, you know, come and pray and it's just a disruptive thing for your life. No, it's actually supposed to be a constructive thing. We're supposed to actually, when we stand on the prayer mat, we understand what we're reading. And that's something we should work on, inshallah. I myself invite myself, invite you to try to learn something new of what you say in prayers every day. What do you say in prayers every day? Fatiha, learn Fatiha. What does Fatiha mean? Yeah, what do we say? Tawheed, learn Tawheed. What do we say? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Go learn what these mean. Go learn what these mean. Let the month of Ramadan not pass before you actually have learned something that would, have, that would change your prayers. That would change your salat. That you understand why salat is obligatory over you every day. Why? Allah is wise. Allah is merciful. There is a reason that he's done it. And if you're not seeing the fruit of it, something is wrong. Yeah? But inshallah, you all can fix that wrong thing if there's something wrong. Salat every day. Sometimes to some of us like myself, maybe it can get routine. Uh, it can take a shape of a routine, you know. Sometimes when I stand on the prayer mat and I finish Salat, honestly, I feel like, did I actually pray? You know, did I have what, what, what just happened? You know, am I focusing? Am I talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is my mind just like a bird flying from one tree to another? You know? So there comes some weekly reminders sometimes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kindly, alhamdulillah, he has given us Yawmul Jumu'ah, Laylatul Jumu'ah, right? The night before Friday, the day of Friday. These are, this is a day where it, we have an opportunity actually to gain proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? So if the daily prayers become monotonic, there is a day in a week where you can feel something is different. You go and you listen to khutbah and, right, and you see the mu'mineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave us reminders where monthly reminders as well, right? So we know that there is a great reverence for the days of 13th, 14th, and 15th of the Islamic months, right? So it's highly recommended, for example, that people fast these days, uh, engage in some acts of worship in the nights of these days, and so on. Yearly, yeah? What yearly reminders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us? What yearly reminders? Can anyone tell me any yearly reminders that would just break the monotone of the day and the week and the month? I'll wait for answers from the, the young um, young lads. What happens every year? What is there every year that comes once that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as a station for us to remember him especially? Let's see. Do you know something? Did you say Ramadan? Ahsan is the month of Ramadan actually, yeah? So the month of Ramadan is one. Yeah? Month of Ramadan is one. Month of Rajab, Shaban, all these months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the mercy that, you know, it's a banquet. If you listen to the khutbah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describing the month of Ramadan, honestly, it's an open feast by a generous king. What is nawmukum fihi ibadan and fasukum fihi tasbih? What is this? If you sleep, you actually have tawab. If you say subhanallah, if you sleep, it's actually as if you are doing tasbih. If you recite one ayah of the Qur'an, it is as if you have finished the Qur'an. What is this? Absolute generosity that we should, inshallah, take advantage of it. We have opportunities all the time to actually remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, sometimes when you want to go and visit, I don't know, a, um, a member of a parliament. Yeah? Should, you, should, you should book an appointment beforehand, isn't it? Or if you want to meet a king or a president or something. And it's a process, honestly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king of the things, the kings, he told you, look, dua is something that is a weapon in your hand. You can use it. You know, If I ever was displeased with you, if you deserve my wrath, you can use dua as your weapon, as your shield. It protects you from my wrath anytime. 
anytime. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do du'a. You don't have to wait for the salat. Yeah? You don't have to wait for the salat time to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can actually talk to him anytime. So du'a is an opportunity. We see Ahlul Bayt salam also encouraging us to remember Allah in so many different situations. Before we sleep, for example, there's recommendations that you read. Al-Fatiha, you recite Tasbih al-Zahra, you recite Tawheed three times, for example. You recite the last verse of Surah Al-Kahf. Yeah? It is recommended also when you wake up, you say, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyani ba'da an amatani wa ilayhim nashur. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you thank him when you wake up. Because he caused you to, he brought you back to life after he caused you to die. And to him you will be resurrected. That's what Dodo said. When you're asleep, what can you control? What are you aware of? You're sleeping, you're helpless. That's how death is, by the way. And sleep every night is the most beautiful reminder about death. It's the most beautiful reminder about death. Every night we actually experience it. Yet, we assume that it's not going to happen to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, it is said that when Malakul Maut comes and, you know, it's time to take the life of someone, they say, look, give me, just give me, give me a few minutes. Yeah? So, no, there's no few minutes. But you should have warned me. Well, mate, I warned you. Did you not hear about your friend who passed away the other day? Was that not enough warning for you? Did you not walk in the funeral of that uncle? Was that not, if not enough warning for you? What were you waiting for as a warning? So, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every minute, in every time, in every situation in our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this. In the Quran, Allah says, Ya ladina amanu, dhikran kathira. Oh, those who believe, remember Allah abundantly. dhikran kathira. Yeah? And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, look, I ask you to remember me because it gives you tranquility. It gives you happiness. Those who believe, their hearts find peace in the remembrance of God. Surely in the remembrance of God do hearts find peace and tranquility. So, of course, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you could, you know, hold the tasbih and say, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. That's a remembrance of God, yes. But that's really a very shallow level of remembrance. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in a narration says that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only saying the dhikr, saying Allahu akbar, saying subhanallah, saying alhamdulillah, saying la ilaha illallah, no, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually to pay attention to his commands and to avoid his disobedience. Yeah, this is a form of remembrance. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually that you step back and try to think and feel the relationship between Allah ta'ala and everything around you. Try to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything around you. Yeah, you don't have to mention it in your tongue, although it is brilliant. Actually, the worship of the tongue is that it mentions Allah, yes. But there is other parts inside you that need to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing I find really important to mention, inshallah, I'll spend the next 10 minutes with that, is that, okay, when we say, inshallah, Layla al Qadr is coming, yes, and we aim to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brilliant, we have awakened, we have woken up, because we mentioned remembrance of death is actually important for awakening. Yeah? When you are journeying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most important and fundamental part is actually to wake up. To wake up. To wake up from this treadmill of life that you are running on. And understand what is most important. Okay, so now... I'm awake, alhamdulillah, we remembered, you know, we remembered that death is going to happen um, to us at any time, and inshallah, I will seize every second and every opportunity in my life to remember Allah, and to make it really something that is blessed, and not to be heedless of God, brilliant. Next step, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every situation, alhamdulillah, inshallah, we all remember Allah in every situation, standing, sitting, 
sleeping. And that's what Allah says in the Quran. You know, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa khtilaf al layl wal nahar la ayatin bi ulil albab al ladina yadkurun Allah qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim. Allah says, the heavens and the earth and everything around you is actually a sign to those who what? Ulil albab, those who have wits. Yeah. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they're standing. Those who remember Allah while they're sitting. Those who remember Allah while they are lying down. Allah is saying, those who remember Allah in every single situation. These are the smart people. The world is a reminder and a sign for all these people. Yeah, anything you look at is actually a sign towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. But now, we always ask ourselves, okay, look, I really like to be a mu'min. Allah says in the Quran so many times, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا آمِنُوا مُؤْمِنُونَ Iman. Iman is mentioned so many times in the Quran. And we all like to be mu'min, right? We all like to be mu'min. Let me ask you again one question, again to the youngsters, or not. Who knows Surah Al-Asr? Raise your hand, please, if you know Surah Al-Asr. Brilliant, okay. Can we all recite it together then, please? I think this way we get all, inshallah, thawabs. Surah Al-Asr is what, three verses, and the Prophet says, if you recite one verse, it's like you finished the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan, isn't it? So that's, that's three times khatma for each one of you when you recite. So let's please recite Surah Al-Asr together, yeah? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا أحسنتم صدق الله العلي العظيم صلى الله إن سورة العصر الله is telling us والعصر. Every human is in loss. Every single person will be in loss except those who believe. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحة. Those who believe, those who have faith, and they do righteous deeds. They do good deeds. Okay. I really like the view of those mu'mineen. I really like to be a mu'min. But how do we know if... How, how can I know if I'm a mu'min? Yeah? How can I know if I'm a mu'min? And to be honest, that's a question that so many people ask themselves, and I ask that question myself as well. How can I know if I'm a mu'min? Ahlul Bayt made it really clear to us that if you want to know how much of a mu'min you are, see how much your knowledge, what you know, how much of it reflects onto your external conduct. A simple equation. If it is 10% of what you know you implement, then your Iman is 10%. If it is 20%, then your Iman is 20%. If you implement and work on what you know 100%, your Iman is 100%. Basically, Iman is levels. Because there was a discussion in Islamic history whether Iman is something that is either existing in someone or not. Either you're a mu'min or you're a fasiq. And there has been a great theological, you know, big theological debate about that matter. Ahlul Bayt say no. Example. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says what? Inna al-ladheena ya'kuluna amwala yatama zulman inna ma ya'kuluna fi butoonihim nara wa sayaslawna sa'ya. Indeed, those who unjustly consume orphans' wealth, in fact, consume nothing but fire into their bellies and they will be burned in a blazing hell. Allah is saying, look, if you do injustice to the money of the orphan, yeah, this is the reward. Okay. Then, that's something that we know now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us of that. Do we act by that or do we not? If I'm a person who goes and uses the money of the yatim, the orphan, unjustly, then I'm not a mu'min. Simple, in that respect. Yeah? Or, for example, there is a beautiful verse that talks about those who hoard gold and silver and they don't spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also promising them adab and a severe punishment. If I'm a person who hoards and accumulates wealth without spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that tells me about how much of a 
Mu'min I am. So Iman is actually implementing what you know. Yeah? Implementing what you know. I mentioned the example of the glass of water which has poison. Yeah? I know that the glass of water has poison. Then I have a belief, a faith, that if I drink from it, I will die. It will harm me. Therefore, I would not drink it. Yeah? What examples we have? I know that after Salat, it is very mustahab to say Tasbihat al-Zahra. Do I implement that or do I not? That tells you how much of a mu'min you are. I know that looking at the haram on TV is something that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is harmful to your heart. And it would disease your heart. Do I do it still? That tells you how much of a mu'min you are. I know that listening to gossip is prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very harmful. And Allah describes it as if you are actually gossiping or backbiting your brother. It is as if you're eating their flesh while they're dead. It's really terrible. It's a graphic description to tell you how awful gossip is or backbiting is. Do I still backbite or do I not? I know that the Holy Prophet وسلم, talks really greatly about the Qur'an and says actually a very beautiful hadith. In هذا القرآن مأدبة الله فتعلموا مأدبته ما استطعتوا The Qur'an is the banquet, is a feast of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn from it as much as you can. Now it's the month of Ramadan. Am I learning the Qur'an? Am I coming to the Qur'an Khani, for example, when I don't, you know, do I have an excuse for not coming? Because that excuse, you will tell it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. Yeah. I know, for example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the most those who are helpful towards people. Ahabbul khalqi ila Allah anfa'ahum li'ayalihi. The most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the people who serve others. Who serve others. You know what, Allah, what does it mean when you say Allah loves you? Allah loves you means that when Allah wants to do something, He will actually turn to you to do it. There is a beautiful verse that talks about some people who actually let go of the way of Allah. And Allah says, look, if you remain on this path, Allah will replace you with people whom he loves and who love him. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the world with your hands if he loves you. So Allah is saying, actually, Allah loves you if you serve people. But then, God bless everyone who is working on this uh, in these events. You know, we ask, okay, is there any volunteer to help us tonight with food, with cleaning or anything? And I stay seated. Yeah. That tells me about how much of a mu'min I am. And so many examples, so many examples you can actually think of. I know that disrespecting parents is something that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Looking at them in a way that has anger or in a... In a inappropriate way this pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do I still do that? do I talk to my parents with respect? Yeah. a beautiful hadith from Imam al-Sadiq actually someone comes and asks him oh Imam أخبرني أي الأعمال أفضل عند الله I'll, I'll just uh, translate it to English what is the best tell me, tell me what is the best action in the sight and the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam al-Sadiq answers he says that with which, oh sorry, without which nothing is accepted. The man said, okay, what is it then? He said, Iman. Belief, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman is an action. Yes, Iman is an action. It is a deed that you do. The person asks, he says, Ala tukhbiruni anil iman? Tell me about Iman or faith. Is it just saying? Or is it saying and doing? What do you think the Imam answered? He said, neither. Al-Iman amalun kullu. Iman is all action. Iman is all work. And he continues in a beautiful hadith. He says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually distributed Iman across the limbs, across the body parts of the person. Your eyes have, has a share, have a share of Iman. Your hands have a share of Iman. Your private part has a share of Iman. Your feet, your legs has a share of Iman. Your heart has a share of Iman. Imam continues and counts all of these. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dictated on your heart what he did not dictate on your hands. Dictated on your hands what he did not dictate on your ears. If you 
They obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your ears, then your ears have iman. If you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your ears, then your ears don't have iman. If you obey, you obey Allah with your eyes, your eyes have iman. If you obey Allah with your feet, you go to the places that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your feet has iman. You see? Iman therefore is levels. You could see someone who is mu'min with the eyes, let's say. They don't look at the haram. Excellent, mashallah. God bless him. God bless her. But when there is gossip, they'd love it. They wouldn't stop people actually saying doing the gossip. So that person is a mu'min in somewhere, but not mu'min in other. And actually, Iman and the heart has actually, it's like the controller of the whole body parts. And this is where the shaitan, when the shaitan actually controls your heart, that's it, you're doomed, basically. Because it controls all the other limbs and body parts. So every body part has its own share of Iman. Of course, we should struggle to achieve the level of Iman in every single jariha, in every single body part of, of ours. The last thing I would mention about Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali sallallahu alayhi wa he's called Amir al-Mu'mineen, he's the chief of the Mu'mineen. He's the pioneer of the Mu'mineen. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen reached the level of Iman in every single part of his body, in every single corner of his heart. He lived with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single moment. When there was moments that he could actually deviate like any other individual would, he would not. He would be the first person to respond to the call of the Prophet Wasallam on the day of Khandaq, the Ma'arakat al-Ahzab, when the Mushrikun of Quraysh gathered a big army, 10,000 people surrounded Medina. The Prophet Wasallam ordered that they may dig a trench and the Mushrikun were able to cross that trench by a, led by a person called Amr ibn Abdul and he was terrifying. The Arabs were terrified of him. The Prophet ﷺ would ask the people who would go and fight this man. No one would talk, no one would say a word. Ali was the person who would stand up. He would say, Ana lahu ya Rasulullah. I can fight him, O Prophet of Allah. The Prophet would tell him, sit, let me see. Anyone is up for fighting this man? No one would talk. Ali would stand up and say, I, Ya Rasulullah. And the third time it happened again. And when Ali السلام, went and battled with the man and killed him in the end, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described that as he's saying, Darbatu Ali in Yawm al Khandaq, Ta'adul Amal at Thaqalain. What Ali had done and on that day is actually equivalent, if not better, than all actions of every human being ever. Because of the level of sincerity that Imam Ali السلام, had. The Prophet also said, all faith manifested in Ali went to battle all disbelief manifested in Amr bin Abdul. Ali السلام, was the manifestation of all faith, all Iman. He had Iman in every single corner of his being. This is Ali bin Abi Talib السلام, whom we are commemorating tonight and the coming night. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, that he may group us with Ali alayhi salam in this world and in the next. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Salawatik.